How you doing, folks? So here are Christopher Duffy. Christopher is a contractor based in the north of me. We're going to have a chat on today about the pressure that both contractors and farmers are under. Bad at this time of year. Oh, yeah. And a bad start of the year. You know, it wrecks your foundation for the, for the, for the work for the whole year. Um, no matter what happens from here on in, look at the weather could take up. It's, there's no sign of it to take up. But even if it does take up in 10 days time and we have a great spell of weather, it's catch up. You know, the, the, everything is far behind. I was on a farm the other day. I seen the cows come out from the yard around half 12 and the farmer brought them back in at half two. You know, them cows should have been out straight out after milking, only brought in for milking. They're not in, they're not out during the, uh, during the night at all. Father on farms is, is running out. Um, tanks are full of slurry. It's just a perfect storm. That's what it is. When you say things are behind, that's going to have a knock-on effect come harvest time, both for silage, maize, corn. Yeah. Like, can we still, are we still all right to plant corn? And still, are we, we're not guaranteed we're going to get it in when it's right. No, look at, <clears throat> I heard this morning, there was a lot, a lot of people banking on sowing beans this year. We've missed the window for planting beans. They'll be still planted, but you won't get the yield. And, um, you know, a tillage farmer planting a crop, knowing that he might not make a profit, but sowing it, knowing he's going to make a loss. Like, I can see land idle this year. I can see land with, without crops in them. Um, farmers might take the opportunity to do a bit of maintenance on the land during the summer, drainage work on that, and then get in with an early crop of wheat uh, in the back end. Uh, lads will sow. We're going to need straw. We're going to need different things. I heard some lads saying that the sown spring barley, that there'll be poor yields, but the straw might make up for it, even though there'll be such a poor crop of straw. But it'll be very expensive. And then that has a knock-on effect to the, 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 the livestock man. He's going to be buying straw this back end and meal, and it'll be double the price. That's what I was going to say to you there. Like, the cost of ever is this going to have a knock-on effect as regards to the public, the consumer? Are they going to be paying more for their milk, their meat? You know, if, if we can't cut mm. our own wheat and mm. barley and oats mm. and whatnot, we're obviously going to have to import it. So yeah. that's the cost. So are we looking at the cost of Everton going up? Oh, don't you know? Well, it'll go up. But sure, it doesn't need to go up. The, the, the price that the consumer is paying doesn't need to go up. The margin that the supermarkets have, um, they could afford to give the farmer more and they could afford to reduce the price on the shelf and they'd still be in massive profit. But it will go up. If the farmer gets an extra cent, the supermarket will get an extra three or four cent. Yeah. That's just the nature of it. Yeah. Do you know? And the farmer, you know what I mean? It's, it's you know, the farmer controls the food, do you know? And, um, but no farms, no food. And mm. that's something that you've been fighting for over the last couple of years. Mm. Like a lot of people would recognize it from Facebook. And then you became a TikTok sensation when you couldn't put a slurry tank on a bicycle when you confronted the boys below on that loan. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you're one of the only people to actually directly stand up. There's a lot of people will talk about it on Facebook and talk it but you seem to be the only man well i know there's james gig and all right i've seen one of yeah. his videos the weekend yeah. very informative and he touched on a lot of farmers down on themselves and maybe fighting depression that they don't know are they going to make it through the winter or the summer what do you think what yeah i'd be worried i would be worried about um well number one i'd be worried about cash flow on farms which is a problem with cash flow for me because um, when I go out to collect my money, if the farmer isn't making money, he ain't going to be able to write me a check. And But that's only one side of it. Uh, the morale is so low with farmers. And look, at I've always talked about things and I do find if you are having a bad day, whether just things are not going right for you, uh, you get you get something in the post that didn't you know make your day either. That you lift the phone and talk to somebody, and you'll say, "Jez, look what happened to me today," or "Look what happened." And they'll say, "Oh, should the same thing happen to me?" And all of a sudden, you go, "Well, I'm not on my own." Yeah. But an awful lot of farmers would be very isolated, 
they wouldn't talk. They mightn't even talk with their own family because they wouldn't want to put stress onto their wife and the kids. And I worry about them because, you know, they'll feel when a, in any business, agricultural, any other business, it, it, this goes across the board. If somebody gets into financial uh, bother, you can feel like a failure. Do you know, and especially farmers who have inherited farms from their fathers, their grandfathers, all down the line, and they could face maybe having to sell a bit of land or face having to reduce stock or that. They can feel that they're, they're letting their ancestors down, basically. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? And as a rule, we are a very proud. We don't like to admit failure. None of us like to admit failure. Far, not even farmers, but yeah. everyone. It's, it's, it's a human nature. You don't want to admit that you fail. No, but I'll tell you, don't worry about your neighbour. Worry about your neighbour if there's something wrong with him. But as I do I always say, don't worry about what your neighbour's opinion he is. At the end of the day, he's not going to pay your mortgage or pay your bills. You just look after yourself and look after your own health. Um, and, and the begrudgers at the crossroads, do you know what I mean? Don't mind them. Do you know what I mean? They have their own problems. It's just they're not, they're not letting it be known. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? So we're in the middle of April. It's the 6th of April. There's a tractor sitting here. There's a few tractors out mm. in the yard. Mm. We should be out oh, walking them. We should be absolutely flat to the mat. Um, we are so far behind. I'll give you an example. Out there in, 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 in beside the yard there, there's, there's um, I was just looking back at some of my books from years ago. I have every diary in there. Like I'm involved in contracting 27 years this year from walking at it to buying my own kit and walking on through the years. And last back end, I had seven farms that we didn't get their dung spr spread for them. So they, they didn't get their dung out. That didn't, uh, they didn't get that goodness into the nutrients into their ground. I didn't get the jobs done, so I didn't get paid. And they'd be jobs you were doing every year. And thankfully, the government brought in a leniency that they were allowed to leave the dung lying in the fields. You know, because there wouldn't have been... So it was hard pressure to get it out. But that, all that dung is still laying in fields. It won't be spread now. The year has gone on too late. And it's, it's, you know what I mean? I should be on top of my head. We should be practically finished piping slurry at this stage. And I should be spending a few weeks spreading dung. We have only tipped, you know what I mean? We, the, the amount of slurry we have still to spread is unbelievable. And the farmers, I'll give you an example of a farm we were on this week. It was one of the first farms we were on. It was actually the first farm we were on when the slurry ban lifted this year. And we spent three days piping on that farm in January. He, the farmer himself tankered an awful lot of slurry since then out on, on ground. And we had to pipe slurry again this week with that man. Or by today, his cows would have been standing in slurry. So, like, you know, that's, that doesn't, that's not normal. Do you know, and most of that man's silage ground hasn't been spread yet. That's what I was going to say. Like, we're at the start of April. Like, in previous years, it wouldn't be unheard of to see a man at first cut around this time of year. Well, look maybe, at what maybe it'd be yeah. a little bit generous. But, but, but April. Bale and no, hey, with, with the growth we do have, bales and that, lads would have been taken out strong paddocks and things like that. Yeah, it could happen. In fact, there's, there's grass on farms at the moment that could be mowed and baled. There definitely there's grass in places that could be zero grazed. You wouldn't get into a field with a machine. Do you know? And uh, we have ground, we have farmers that would have been aiming to be cutting silage. That we would be planning to be mowing with them the first week in May. They haven't the fertilizer out. Some of the ground is never got slurry. And I think, I don't think we're going to get slurry on that ground. They'll have to go with less fertilizer because, you know, they're going for three cuts. They have to get it cut. They can't let it shoot out and turn into dung. And by it not getting enough fertilizer, by it not getting enough fertilizer, it's like the ingredients to making a cake. This, the first cut silage is going to be bad quality all over the place. It can't be anything but bad quality. And it's your, it's your feed. Everything after your first cut is buffer. You know, you get your quality in your first cut. So obviously, we can't do anything about the weather. That's out of our control. Mm. But what could we do, we'll say, what could the government do ne going forward next year mm. to 
ease the pressure on the farmers? Ah, look, the government could do loads. Um, the slurry ban is number one uh, unworkable. <laughs> Absolutely unworkable. Uh, we're actually lucky enough in this area that we get to go on the 15th of, of, of January. Cav and Mona and different counties uh, can't go on till the 1st of February. Uh, by the time the ban lifted, them people, by the time the 1st of February came, their land was in, 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 in an awful mess. January wasn't too bad. Um, we would have spread a lot of dairy washings during the closed period. And land was in super air, super condition a lot of the time. But farmers couldn't get out with slurry. Uh, the slurry ban this in 2023 in gone was supposed to be brought back to the 1st of October. Then, with a bit of fight, they brought it back to the 15th. This year, going forward, we're going to be so late with first cut silage, second cut, and third cut. Third cut silage mightn't be done <coughs> by the 1st of October. And the farmer's supposed to have a slurry out by the 1st of October. Um, the people in the Department of Agriculture, and it's, it's very disappointing with a lot of the government ministers because they're from farms. They'll tell you, when you tackle them, they'll tell you, oh, I know I'm from a farm myself. And you'd love to say, well, then you should know better. And they'll blame Europe. They'll blame everybody. They can make the decisions at home. We have to abide by certain regulations, but our own government can change the, 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 the rules themselves. And the slurry ban has to go. If the slurry ban wasn't there, there'd be very little slurry spread in this country in unsuitable conditions. Because it's too valuable, it's too the, 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 the slurry is too valuable, and then in most cases the farmer is paying a contractor to do it. And when I started working at slurry back in the 1990s, we spread slurry all the time. We spread slurry up until Christmas. We took a week off for Christmas. We were back at it again in January. The only time we ever stopped was when the weather didn't suit. Now we're in a situation that when the ban opens on the 15th of January, it doesn't matter what ground conditions are like, we're out there spreading. You're playing on the land, you're making sure the land really it's sometimes. Trying. Yeah, yeah. And then that's another knock-on effect to try and get the land to recover from it. Absolutely, yeah. No, and i tell you what it is. It's a health and safety. Come then the other end, coming up to the ban, when the ban is coming in. And we'll say you're five, six weeks out from the ban, and we mightn't even be that busy. And all I am getting is phone calls from farmers saying, I want <coughs> you to put out my slurry, but I don't want you until the last couple of days. And I'm telling them, listen, I can't spread this all the last couple of days. Yeah, I will. You're here now. Like, yeah. if, if we got a dry spell of weather, your phone would be hopping. Everyone wants you to one day. Oh, yeah. Everyone wants you to one day. And that, that's going to be a major problem. But I think we've missed our window. This, this is the problem. Uh, a lot of the slurry spreading that we've actually not been able to do this spring, uh, I think we've missed that. I think we've missed that window. I don't think, as we go on now into April and the weather takes up, hopefully at some stage, that ground has to be all grazed and it's too late and you'll be bringing it back in with silage. And, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be a serious amount of slurry to be spread in this country as the year goes on. You want help? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm trying to look at these cats up, maybe. I know <laughs> it's costing more to feed them than it's keep the yard going. And then the knock-on effect, like you're going to be under pressure. You're going to be working later hours. That's going to put the cost up on the farmer. It's all a knock-on. Look, at it's all a cost, and and the problem is, like. Over the last few years, we've been we, our prices have all gone up in what we're charging our customers, and our customers are, are very important to us because as a contractor, we're in the in the how would I say the unstable position that if that doesn't ring, you're unemployed. I have no I have customers I have customers that we've worked for for the last twenty years, but tomorrow morning if that customer just decided. I'm not getting Christopher anymore. I'm getting such another villa. There's not a thing I can do about it. And uh, so I, ha I have to, there's a fine line. I have to also say, well, my customers are going through a hard time. So I can only charge them. I'll ch I have to put up the price, 
but I can't it's put them in, yeah, I can't push them to, to a limit where our relationship gets a bit, you know, stressed because there is always someone that'll do it cheaper. Yeah. yeah. There is always, they mightn't last in the game, but they will do it cheaper, they're available. L loyalty, I, I'm very lucky with loyalty with my customers and I think they do know when they see an extra few bob on an invoice, they know I'm only charging them when I have to charge them to keep well, a, a diesel float. has gone up, AdBlue has gone up, mm. the main thing is the machine, the price of the machine, yeah. like everything has gone up, so naturally yeah. that has to be passed on yeah. down, the, down the chain. Like. It is it is passed on, but there's a limit of how far we can go. But you can't work for nothing. No, you can't work for nothing, but then you also have to s sort of make sure your business stays afloat, um, that hopefully when costs start coming back, Will they um, come back? Things very rare. Well, fuel, for example. Uh, the carbon tax, when, 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 I'm, when I get a fill of delivery of diesel to this yard, look, we're only a, a middle of the road size contracting outfit. Um, we have four tractors. I have, I have a couple of lads working. We're not massive. There's lads out there with, you know, all sorts of gear. But every time, every time I get... Uh, I had it worked out that every time I get a fill of diesel, it's cost me nearly 400 euros in carbon tax. Actually, no, it cost me more. And I had it worked out that a self-propelled silage outfit this year will, every single day, a lot of them big outfits, will be paying 500 euros in carbon tax per day. And the government will tell you that that carbon tax is ring-fenced for retrofitting houses for people that they'll save on their energy bill. So basically... The contractors of Ireland and the farmers are retrofitting the houses for everyone else. Plus paying back on top of their invoices. Yeah. Um, there's things that could be done to straight away, our job could be the VAT on food production. Like we're charging most of our customers VAT on silage cutting, on slurry spreading and everything. That should be reduced to the customer that they could claim that back, even if they're not VAT registered. And uh, you know what I mean? And straight away, that's a serious saving to the customer. Mm -hmm. And it allows us to bring our price up to what we need the price to be at. You know what I mean? Like there's a tractor there behind me, and that tractor there is, 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 is nearly 10 years old, but there's one in the yard that was only bought last year, the same. And that tractor has gone up 50,000 in price in the space of less than five years. And you've no choice to only buy them. The one that was traded in was needed to be changed. Well, you know? That's it. Like, a lot of people say, oh, the farmers aren't broke. They're driving around in new machinery and mm. contractors mm. crying a bit money and the new machinery. But yeah. at the end of the day, like, you have to have good machinery or one of more downtime. The downtime is the killer and the breakdowns. These yokes break down. Uh, if you have so many gearbox or something, uh, you're lucky to get away 10 grand. 10 grand is gone, 10,000 euros on these big tractors on repair isn't the, isn't the end of the world. That's how expensive it has got. What's uh, a set of tires for? Oh, I don't know. I presume a set of tires for that tractor, if you put a good brand of tires on it, could set you back fucking five grand. You know, it can set you back more probably. I haven't bought tires in a while. Like I have a few spares there you'd be holding on to. We'd often change off, put on new tires. And you'd be keeping, you know what I mean, your other ones if you ripped a tire or done something. Because a tractor with no tires is no good either. Especially with the weather. Yeah. Um, everything has, you have to have more equipment. You have to have bigger equipment. It's like the tillage farmers will tell you. The tillage farmer has a, a massive combine, maybe two combines. And they'll often tell you, one half the size would do them if they had the weather. Yeah. You know, but when you only get a couple of days. A short window, you yeah, need reliability. Yeah. And it's like this, it's like us at the contract, and when we go, we have to go, yeah. you know. You have to be sitting with the machine ready, ready to go when that phone rings, I'm ready. Yeah, and, 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 and it has got that way too, like farmers do kind of demand, my, my, my customers are good in fairness to them, they know I'm, I'm working very locally, and if, I, if, if a farmer rings me and I'm able to tell him where I am, and I'd be fairly good on knowing how long it'd take to get to him, and I'll prioritize if I have one farmer that's under serious pressure with slurry and I'm supposed to go to another one, I could ring him and he'd say, oh yeah, look, get him out of bother and come back to me. I'm not heading off to some new job 30 miles away, do you know? And, and that's great. Like We're lucky in that sense. But, um, you know, I know of a lot of 
bigger dairy farmers would be very demanding of the, the, the contractors and maybe they need to realize that there's accidents, there's, there's, there's men working too many hours and there's young drivers and maybe just get it into your head that that contractor is to the pin of his collar to make his repayments. And he's not, when, when he, you're expecting him tomorrow morning at six o'clock and he doesn't get to you till after dinner tomorrow, it's not that they had to lie on. Yeah. It's that the job just didn't finish up as as, as quick as they thought. Maybe they had the cut of a breakdown, the cut of a the cut of anything. Uh, a driver could have got sick, and there was a tractor lying idle for half a day. We're only human, yeah. you know. It's like that when someone wants you, they want you. That's that. That's it. But contractors are getting scarce. They're not getting. They're not getting any more. No, well, it's a tough market to be in, like. Yeah, but um, and look at, I do fear for this year. Um, we have plenty of work. Um, Just can't get at it. We have plenty of work. We can't get at it. And I do worry when farmers are writing out big checks for, for buying in silage and buying in meal and the milk, te- the milk check not as good as it should, uh, it, it's a hit on their cash flow. And it just, I'd be, I'd be a bit afraid that, you know, we could be left, we could be left behind when it goes to collecting money, you know. That does worry me now. Uh, uh, contractors could be left behind. Yeah, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of contractors still owed a lot of money from last year's work. Yeah. Um, now, thankfully, thankfully, I'd be on top of that. But uh, yeah, a lot of the bigger men would be still owed for for last for some of the silage to cut last year. And like when we're heading for the middle of April in another week or so, you know, and and silage should be cut in May. That's just it's not acceptable, really. It's not going to be cut. Is no. That- but it doesn't happen in any other sector. You know what I mean? Like, you're involved in, in, in the haulage game and that and different things. Like, I, I'm sure the, 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 the men get their money in every month or they wouldn't be able to keep the wheels turning. Well, this is it, yeah. You know, and, and, and I pay my bills every month. And when the diesel comes, I pay for it because the last thing you want is, to, is, is, is the diesel bill to get on top of you. You know, and the way I look at it is if the tanks are empty and uh, they need to be filled, well you have to have the money in your bank to do it. And the only way to have the money in your bank is to go and collect the money. That's how it works. It's it's, it's a merry-go-round, yeah. you know. It's a vicious circle. Yeah, you know, and, and if we all work together, you know. But, and in this time, the government need to stop monitoring the problem and they need to start addressing it. They always wait until, until we're in a crisis. The crisis is here. We can see it's going to get worse. And you hear the Minister of Agriculture saying he's monitoring the problem. He has turned around and he has said there's not a father crisis, that there's loads of father in the country. But it is a father crisis if you have a farmer out of, out of, out of feed and he can't afford to buy it. That is a crisis. Yeah, that is a crisis. Like when the farmer has no food, that is a crisis. But is, he's monitoring the situation. In Dublin. Oh, aye, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's monitoring it from Dublin. But look, at he's from a farm himself. He should know. But look, they lose touch with reality, so they do. Um, it's, it's plain to be seen how bad things are. So it is, and, and, and farmers need something. It's like, the grain, it's like the grain problem. I heard one farmer saying like if, if, if they committed to giving every grain farmer uh, um, 100 euros an, a- an acre, it actually amounts to not an awful lot of money. When you see how much money is available for a lot of things. Um, I'm not going to go into my views, but we'll say we had an endless pot of money for 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 um, housing refugees and things like that. A frac- tiny fraction of that would give a tillage farmer 100 euros an acre. A tiny fraction would give uh, struggling livestock farmers a bonus to to pay for a bit of fodder. It's not it, these people feed us. The, the farmers feed us. And, and as the sign says, no farms, no food. Yeah. And don't mind the talk about the farmers in the in, in, in the big shiny tractors and everything like that. If you don't have the gear, you don't get the work done. That's it. And farmers, it's, a, it's debatable what I'm going to say. A lot of people have different views. Like, I'm not going to say they're the backbone of the country, but when the snow is here, they're the boys out cleaning the roads. Council don't do it. Like when there's a sick child in the area, it's the farmers and the haulage men and the local vintage men that come out and support them. Like, but that kind of goes on. You know, people don't talk about it because these these tractors are holding us up on the road. We are trying to go to work. Look, the public are great. 
<laughs> the public are great when you're su- when you're suiting them too, and I just sometimes have to remind people of this. You know, like that road out there was impassable back in what year had we the, the big snow, and um, I wore the blade off a bucket on my loading shovel, um, cleared the roads. I cleared this whole area that that you could get in and out of of our village. And I was glad to do it because I had a, an elderly granny myself and I was afraid if she got sick or fell uh, we couldn't get an ambulance in or out or anything like that. I was glad to do it. but And I was a local hero for a couple of hours. Yeah, and then, a local hero. But then a few weeks later, you're putting out slurry and, and you're, the, you're the public enemy number one because you're probably a bit of muck on the road. So just remember, like, we're, we're working under rough conditions a lot of the time. And, you know, just you're living in the countryside just understand how the countryside works. You know, that's it. Oh, you know, you know. if you want to live in an apartment, you know, you're never going to come out the door of your apartment and slip over a, a, a cow shade. You might in the countryside. Just, you know, live with it. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And Christopher, thanks for the crack. Thanks for the chat, should I yeah, say. And yeah, no bother. We'll catch up with you in the summer, hopefully, when you're out and about. Oh, yeah, if it ever dries up, come out to see us in so the field. Could, could we roof it? I don't know. I don't know. I actually seen a, a farmer planting planting um Solar stuff. Panels. No, I don't talk to me about them. <laughs> I seen a farmer. I seen a farmer planting in a big ma- he had acres and acres and acres of greenhouses and some part of Dublin. You were looking at it and you were just saying, yeah, I think that could be the way to go on the on that end of things. Yeah. you know. But look at we'll we'll survive. And I, the Irish people are resilient. And the farmers, in fairness to them, they can get kicked and kicked and kicked and they'll keep getting up. And and as long as as long as as long as you keep the head right, everything else will be That's okay. The main thing. Keep your mental health right. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's yeah. it's a farm. You know, if yeah. we have a bad year, we'll get up and we'll get over it next yeah. year. We'll go again. Yeah, so look, I think we all have to be a bit mad to be at it in the first place. So you know, we're halfway there. Just go and crack. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Christopher, thank you. No bother. Thanks, man.